realities lie within things that people may overlook and think that the secret is in a bigger issue. They focus on their salah and they think that the importance of their reality will be in their salah. And in reality the secret is in their wudu. Hmm. But if you don't have wudu, what's the secret of salah going to open for you? Means there's many actions that we do and the brain tries to perceive what it believes to be important but there are secrets. So when Prophet is directing us to salah and the one whom leaves their salah leaves their deen, leaves their way, disconnects from the Divine, the Presence but giving for us a sign, it's not that easy, direct your attention to the salah. See if Allah is putting all this focus on prayer, it's not something small. So then everything leading to that event is going to have an immense key. That's the difference between arifin and regular people. They say, oh salah, okay let's just do salah. And arifin and gnostics and those whom Allah inspire within their heart that there's a secret in it. There's actions that are known and there are actions that Allah inspire within your heart an immense reality. So then awliyaullah come and then they teach, well then the secret is in your wudu, in your ritual washing. And then even within that there's layers and layers of secrets because you sit with external ulama and they want to talk about the wudu, the importance of the wudu but yet they don't really understand the secret of wudu which is the secret of your salah because one will negate the door. The one whom does not wash, does not achieve through their prayer the reality that Allah wants them to achieve. This is As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. I mean that there's no credit for it. I'm sure Allah gives credit for any action that somebody's intending to do. But did you unlock its reality? No. Then they understood their external washing and then they'll argue of how much to wash, what negates to wash and awliyaullah again come and teach because every level there's a deeper knowledge, a deeper knowledge. Awliyaullah come and remind that the companions washed with a cup of water. So the act of washing is necessary to unlock the key of prayer but the reality is in the water. Means it goes deeper, Gnosticism tariqahs, they want to take the subject, they want to contemplate because Allah constantly reminds through the Qur'an when He says that uh, everything is in Divinely praise, no one hears it except the people of tafakkur. Drawing our attention that there are people whom contemplate and they hear the praise. 
they see the light, they understand the reality, find them. Should be your natural conclusion. Who are these people of tafakkur in which they hear the praise of Allah's Divinely praise in everything and then to their darajat, how much they hear, what type they hear. That within everything there's a reality. People say, I don't see anything, what are you talking about the qayb? I only see what I see with my eyes and that's all that exists. And they come and teach you, well, you see this cup clearly, yes. You say, this is water, say, yes. So what do you see in this water? I say, nothing. Well then you can't see. So don't trust your eyes. Don't use your eyes to understand your religion because eyes are going to be deceived. But within this cup there's infinite amount of creatures, creation in there. We haven't the faculty, the ability to see it. There are all sorts of creatures in there and if you look at those creatures and you turn the electron microscope on stronger, there are creatures on top of the creatures. Then there are creatures on top of those creatures. For wherever you look Allah's there first, Allah's creation, He's going to create. You can't reach a point in which Allah's not there, Allah's creation not there, Allah's realities are not there. But what Allah brings into our heart is don't think as you saw it, you saw it. There's something much deeper. So salah, yes it's important. You think you know how to pray, alhamdulillah. You recite perfectly, alhamdulillah. You extend all your A's and, and, and pronunciations, alhamdulillah. But let's go now back to your wudu. So yes, and I wash. I wash with a certain amount of water and awliyaullah come into our lives. Well, it wasn't the water because it was a cup. When they were washing in the desert it was a cup of water. So the secret wasn't in the quantity of water but what they understood of the haqqaiq of that mai. That Allah described that my throne is upon mai and that's a mim and alif. Anytime mim and alif is La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah So when Allah is directing us that my throne is on the water means my izzat and might is upon this water. There's an immense secret from this water, you come from this reality, everything manifests from this reality, then understand it. So again they want to unlock their salah, they're directed by these awliya and the uloom and the knowledges that they bring from the heart of Prophet direct yourself to the water. What is that importance of that water? Then they contemplated more in their tafakkur because they said and they contemplated, Ya Rabbi what is this power of water? Said, my power is on that water, that the malaika, their qudra is upon the mai and their reality is water. It's very stable but yet extremely powerful, H2O. H two of the H's, one oxygen because the jinn are from fire and the angels are from my. Say, oh the shaykh they're from a light, yeah but the reality of that light is water. And they're H2O and Allah's might holds that explosive formula together. For if at one time the angels move their energy, that H and O becomes a bomb. If Allah lift one H, that's a hydrogen bomb. It means all our oceans, if Allah ever becomes tired of humanity, it's very easy. It gives a command, H, leave, and the oceans will explode. And Allah directs people whom contemplate, 
do you see the immense power in water? And that it has an angelic reality because such a power that's stable. Because jinn have power but they're completely unstable, they're like fire. So anyone who plays with fire gets burned. Humans have a fire, a power but they don't know how to balance it. And so what Allah gave to us is, I gave an immense secret in you. I gave you clay, I gave you water and I gave you fire. If you balance your elements and understand who you are, you can be more powerful than all of them. Because if you reach your ahad, your covenant with Allah you're above the angels. And if you reach that covenant and Allah's ocean of sincerity, you are more powerful than the jinn, they'll be under your command. And if you don't open any of the doors, you're the weakest of Allah's creation and you fall prey to every type of difficulty. And they understood that that water is an angelic power, how it purifies them is by an immense force and immense qudra. And when they're not feeling good they need the Divine fire within them. So then they drink water, say, before you do anything in the morning drink a full cup of water. It's an angelic fire, angelic power that comes and resets all the organs and the reality of the body. Your 70% water, your blood, that when you sit and you contemplate the reality of that water, the immensity of that fire and that the angelic reality that when you're making du'a, making durood, making salawat, that water ignites. That's why we bring water to the associations. This zikr, if it's angels they're saying, Ameen. Not Coca-Cola because they invented that as the fountain of death. Shaitan everything he does, his disclaimer is on it because he fears Allah. Nothing is hidden from shaitan. You cannot, you cannot rise to Allah's presence and say, I didn't know. So you knew. He put his logos upon it, he put his information upon it and you chose to use that. So they show it as a fountain as if it's coming from paradise but it kill you if you drink it because of the contaminants and the sugar and everything it has. But the reality of my and the reality of water is an immense power. So they drink it, they become healed, they make du'a over it. That anytime you want you take your salawats, you take your du'a, when you're reciting Qur'an put water by you. Bring your, your tub of water, you see them in the gym, they, they walk with an entire arrowhead bottle. They don't need that much <laughs> but they believe in what they're doing. Imagine if, if pious people believe like that. And every time they were going to sit and pray and in the room that you pray put a big thing of water. Every time you're praying the water is saying, Ameen, it's all malaika, all has a Divine Qudra, has no nafs, no ego. What you're in need of Allah will put its remedy so it has an immense shifa, has an immense healing, has an immense power. And as a result they understood that it's the angelic power that when they're making the du'a Ya Rabbi that I'm going to wash قُلْ يَا نَهْرُ كُنِي بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا that make the fire of my bad character be something cool and peaceful and they make their wudu, they do their washing, they make their du'as, they're igniting, consciously igniting the angelic force within that water that will wash away my bad character. As water is used to wash the dead because they're about to meet Allah Every salah is the same reality, Ya Rabbi I'm asking to meet and be in Your Divinely Presence, ignite this water to wash away my badness. 
So that my salah levitates into your reality, moves into your reality and big ulama sitting and talking about the wudu, the wudu, the wudu. Then the haqqaiq of the wudu goes even deeper. If you understood the importance of that water and you understood the importance of its conscious knowledge because that which you know you'll be dressed by. Because if you don't know the water had power you don't even know what you're using, oh, a little bit here, a little bit there, splash it everywhere, make everybody look like I took a shower. So that everyone can see, woo this guy is a clean guy. Some guys say, oh we shower every day, say, we don't need to make wudu anymore. It's not about that, there's a secret in it. When you're conscious of the reality and understand and by your prayer and by your knowledge Allah makes it to open that this is an angelic fire, a divinely fire and divinely power. What you pray upon it of goodness Allah, ameen, the angels are saying ameen. Igniting it, dressing you, blessing you, washing away the difficulty within you. When you understood that reality then awliyaullah push within your heart, go deeper now. That if that water and its angelic reality, what about the ocean that you carry within yourself? If we describe the external earth can explode. When Allah describes in Qur'an people are like, how, how the oceans can explode on Yawmul Qiyamah when they want to find doubt in everything. Say, come on Yahoo, if you have a little bit of a brain Allah take away one H and our earth and entire existence will be exploded. When He says the oceans will boil, yes immediately just one H starts to go and the game is on. Then Allah directing, if you understood that, well you have an entire earth of yourself and 70% of you is a liquid, is a water. So then they understood this angelic force, this ability to ignite the earth on Yawmul Mashar, on the Day of Judgment when Allah is about to destroy everything from this creation, Allah said, why don't you do it inside yourself first if you understood the reality, right? So, oh, this is a potential, these oceans are going to explode. Then you sit and meditate and find that the water within yourself is as explosive. And if you meditate and ignite that fire, ignite that engine and that potential of the blood within yourself, the furnace to ignite it is the qalb. But dhikrullahi tatmayna qulub. That's why we don't focus on the endocrine system, we don't focus on chakras all over the body. The only chakra, the only lataif, the only place that has to open is the furnace, the house of Allah qalb al-mu'min baytullah. The one whom believes in the Divine, Allah's house will be his heart. More powerful than the external house of Allah Allah will reside, his qudra, his love, his sincerity, his ishq resides within the heart of that believer, becomes the furnace that ignites their blood. And every time they enter into their zikr, their hal, their heart with this qudra of dhikrullah immediately hits the blood and ignites their entire liquid state in their body. Those who don't understand it, they didn't understand the three states of matter. It's all science and it's all hadith and it's all Qur'an. If you remain a, lic- a, a solid state you can achieve nothing. Through the tariqahs and through training with the shaykhs they're going to melt your solid state and the solid state is caused by your head. Your ego's big, you think you know something and they want your head off. So the Zulfiqar of Imam Ali salam comes to teach you every tariqah is La ilaha illallah, the first zikr, La 
to your head, lam alif on your head, ilaha illallah into your heart. Don't use your head, your nafs is blocking you from any type of reality that they want to open the heart. And as a result of following the guidance, wa kunu ma sadiqeen, itaqullah, have a consciousness and follow the truthful servants of Allah truthful in their action and their deeds, not just by their mouth. They'll train you how to lose your solid state in which you're not using your head, you've decapitated your head. You understood your head is the abode of shaitan for right now, it's not the khalifa yet, right? The head is the one causing all the problems. I know this, I know that, little bit of knowledge and you're going to be lost. Because the head is going to try to chew and dissect everything that's being taught of reality, mm, oh yeah, no, cut your head off. Take a path of, La ilaha illallah, I know nothing, empty your cup, every spiritual path describes. As soon as you lose your solid state, they begin to teach you how to be liquid. Liquid, lucid. When you're liquid, you go with the flow, stop making problems. Because a square, solid fits into nothing. It says, here no, here no, here no, it fits nothing other than another square head, then they get along together because they're square. When the square melts, the solid melts, what happens? Becomes liquid. Anywhere you throw the liquid, it moves into it because of the good character, khuluq. And this was the example of Prophet Allah Not that mashaAllah you have said you memorized everything but you are of a magnificent character. For if not good character all the memorization is for what? It's built on corrupt. So what Allah gave as a praising for Prophet and khuluqul azim, you are of a magnificent character. Because anything you build upon good character is beautific to Allah They become liquid, they become patient, they become uh, sort of go with the flow, not here to cause problems, agree to be nothing. And as a result they're, they're gaining Allah's love because of their good character. Then they understood now in their body that liquid that's moving in them. And the more they imitate that, that liquid in the motion of with themselves because you're trying to be solid and inside of you is liquid. When you lose that solid state, stop being hard, stop being angry. The way to Allah is not anger. You're trying to overcompensate with bad character and hide the bad character showing I'm an angry person and therefore Allah's happy with me assuming that Allah's also angry so you're angry and you both are doing good. But no, it's not that, Allah is love and Allah created this creation out of love, out of wanting to be known. So when we lose the solid state, the liquid state, what happens? Now we're understanding the internal water. When we understand the internal water, we understood that with the meditation, the contemplation, the connecting to this energy field and this ocean and vibrations that Allah is sending because only through a liquid state we can feel it and we begin to become sensitive with our character. Because you become soft when you're humble. When people bother you and you don't become agitated, you try to keep patience, try to keep yourself to be soft, the heart becomes a subtle device to feel the vibrations of Allah's zikr in everything back to where Allah described, none know it but the people of tafakkur. Because they're so in tune with their reality they're in tune with the angelic force moving within their body 
the liquid within their body, the blood within their body, they cleaned it and purified it because that same blood Prophet describes shaitan is running through it. Don't eat bad, don't drink bad. Prophet gaze, where's shaitan residing? In the blood. So go after him. If it's shaitan is your enemy, don't let him in the blood. Watch what you eat and what you drink. And what you eat and drink, make sure that you made your du'a over it to burn shaitan. Make sure that you ate with your right and not your left hand because your barakah and blessing is in your right hand. Left hand is to wash your dirtiness. Don't put that into your mouth and contaminate and then shaitan takes that share of that rizq, that sustenance and now flowing in your blood to fight you inside. So the one whom only washes outside and barely reached an understanding of external and secrets of wudu, then awliya come and teach, that's great, you understood a little bit about wudu but how your salah is going to rise when the devil is already within you? Every time you say, Allahu Akbar, the devil in you says, absolutely not, no Akbar, I'm Akbar and pushes your body down, right? Because Muslims have no power, look at them, they're playing with a football. You think if they had power in their salah, they would have spent 400 billion dollars on a stupid ball? Shaitan deceived them. So when the devil's inside you, well, what your salah is going to do? Because now we're going to show you how your salah is being negated. Because people are very proud of their prayers. Say, we don't have to do zikr, we don't have to come to these things, we make salah. Well, awliya come and teach us, no, no, the haqqaiq of your salah and the reality of your salah is far greater than what you think it is. That you understood the power of water, you understood the power of washing, you understood the reality of all of that, now go deeper. That shaitan is actually inside of me, I have to understand how to ignite and make a wudu inside. Because that very water that he's flowing through is the thing that's stopping me from my prayers, stopping me from my prayers being accepted. Well how Allah can accept the prayer when the devil is in you and you're trying to pray to Allah He's contaminating the du'a, he's contaminating the action. So imagine sending a beautiful package to somebody but has all sorts of viruses on it. You bring it to the door and said, what's all of that on top of that? Oh, it just comes with the package, don't worry, it's in a beautiful package with a bow. Get out of here. I don't know what's in there, it says, no, it has a nice bow on it. The virus is inside, the devil is inside. And that's why Allah gives guidance, go to the turuqs. They know the reality of water, they know the reality of these, these secrets. So then they begin to teach you, if you really understood the water, now clean the water inside your being. The Ya Rabbi, I have to clean this water inside of me. My fight is not outside devils, my fight is with the devil inside of me swimming around. And I'm trying to catch him, restrict him and not allow him into my heart. Then we understood how Prophet brought all of the battle sequence for that. Well, fast. As soon as you fast, you restricted his flow and every gate that he's trying to go to. So now all the West, Allah's guiding them because Islam will rise from the West, the sun will rise from the West. So now what do you see everybody in the West is doing? It's called intermittent fasting. Who's inspiring them to do that? That was the Sufi way, eat once a day. When you wake up don't eat. Drink, drink your tea, your water, whatever you like. No sugar, no food. And all the way to five, six o'clock, 
so that your system was in a fast. Why? Why? Because it resets all your organs, your intestines, your entire being health-wise it must be amazing for your health. But two is to combat shaitan. So now the whole West is understanding intermittent fasting and the East running after a bowl and they have no interest in any type of fasting. So you see the signs of Allah because they're coming, they say, oh fasting's amazing. As soon as a few clever ones do it then every scientist is now coming on television say, yeah actually fasting resets all your organs. Before you know it Ramadan will be entirely in the West and in the East there'll be soccer games, forgetting all of that because it's happening now. Allah's guiding them that come against this devil within yourself, ignite the water within your being, you fast, restrict what the eating, drinking, making du'a and then they're beginning the battle of the inner shaitan. And that's why Prophet described jihad al-akbar, the great jihad is inside you, not outside because the devil's inside blocking the salah, blocking all the prayers, blocking all of the du'as, blocking all of the good action because the devil inside tainting every action. So turuqs and tariqahs they sit, contemplate and as a result of their contemplation they're going in and fighting. And they understood that they got to heat their system. So then they learn how to do their muraqabah, how to connect to energy because the more energy that shines on them the more that power is dressing their entire being and causing a fire inside their internal reality. Because the devil hides in the corner and in the shade just like the Dracula movies. So then the sun shines the devil runs, his vampires run. But the sun is the heart and it has to be luminous. And if you don't have a luminous and illuminated heart filled with the dhikr of Allah the purity and cleanliness and the love and ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad if your heart not like that yet find somebody who is illuminated, not the Illuminati but illuminated because they're fake. The one whom is really illuminated, then when you sit with them, meditate with them, their sun begins to reflect upon your reality. Their lights reflect upon your reality and this is what Allah wanted, ittaqullah wa kunu ma sadiqeen. Have a consciousness and keep the company of these truthful servants. They're like suns, they're lit. As a result of the energy around them they can begin to put the burn, they put the burn, they put the burn until you're burning that devil inside. Then the zikrs and awrads that they give you are for exactly that purpose. Do the etiquette that recite this, recite this, recite this, recite this, why? It's fire inside your heart because every dhikrullah tatma in a qulub, dhikrullahi tatma in a qulub. The dhikr of Allah purifies the heart of the believer. So as they're making dhikr, as they're making their salawats Allah's fire is in the heart. Oh, who's going to meet that fire? Because shaitan is uh, he's in the… Like a, like a river, you know like a lazy river at the, these resorts. He's sitting in the blood system scared to death to enter that heart. And that's why he tells people, don't do dhikr because he wants to come through the heart, shoot out through all of your essential organs, the blood is flowing. He doesn't want to get near the heart that does dhikr because as soon as that heart is going to pump Allah on it and has the, has the metal, has the iron within the blood, the power and the qudra, dhikrullahi tatman al it's going to whoo like a fire and it's going to ignite that blood and burn anything bad within that blood, that becomes a purified blood that goes to all of the eleven essential organs of the body. And the organs are then nourished with the dhikr of Allah a beautific blood that's been pure and purified. 
So the shaitan says, no, 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 don't mention, don't do dhikr, don't do these things so that he can flow into the heart freely and then go into all the organs and cause his dis-ease. He'll enter into every organ and begin to shut it down, to overtake insan. And that's why Allah gave the tariqahs that sit with those who want to teach you your external rules. But that's good for as long as your body is around. What about your soul rules? What about the inner reality and the power of the inner power? And that's why you understood now the inside controls the outside. Not the outside control the inside because we just proved to you that if you don't clean inside no matter how much you washed outside the devil inside of you already destroyed all your actions. But the one whom cleans inside, purifies their inside, illuminates their internal reality, immediately begins to shine all of their external reality. Then as soon as they wash with a very simple wash like a cup, that's why the companions, they're, they're glowing suns from the luminous light of Muhammadun Rasulullah wasallam, And that's why we call them the holy companions. Their station can't be achieved. They're illuminated by the love of Prophet They don't need to use a lot of water. The fire within them has burned these devils and now it's just ritual. Just put the water, ritually washing any impurity and bad energy off of you as was prescribed in the wudu, but the real battle was the inside. The inside wudu, the inside water, the inside angelic fire in which their zikr ignites. So we said the one whom's trained in his lucid state or his, his water state, liquid state, he becomes ethereal within a second because just the hal comes and energy comes from the zikrs and the state in which the shaykh has trained them, as soon as they catch that energy they're ethereal, means their, their liquid is now like a gas. They feel with the feeling of their soul, they feel with the energy of their soul. The zikr of a solid state is one thing, the zikr of a liquid state individual is a completely different and the zikr of a ethereal state which quickly ignites and fills with their soul like a noble gas. Immediately they fill with their soul entirety of the zikr and all the energy and power of the zikr. We pray that Allah open and this is all from the power of nasheeds and salawats because this is the medicine that burns inside. These zikrs, these salawats, these praisings are what's igniting the furnace inside. That's why Prophet described, if you see the halakas and circles of paradise, stop and sit and graze, I mean eat and drink there, stop and sit there because these are circles of paradise. You're being dressed from the realities of paradise. These become the power and the dress that burn everything impure. So that the soul goes back to its paradise reality and as a result the luminous state of their soul begins to burn through everything. The beauty is inside not outside, the cleanliness is inside not outside. The one whom is clean outside but dirty inside is dangerous because they have an appearance of being very clean but rotten inside. The one whom is beautiful outside but dead inside, run, run. That's what Prophet described, it's inside that counts. But we reached a point in our humanity where everyone's just interested in outside and they left the inside and the inside was the beatific reality, the inside was the powerful reality. We pray that Allah address us and bless us in these holy months and the reality of this ishq and this love and the reality of these lights and the 
the reality of my and, and water inshaAllah, bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.